are again on the uh, banking close to the parking. We're doing 230 kilometres per hour on the banking now. And as we come off, we're going to be accelerating up to the maximum speed. So we now have 250, 280, 300. It will not go any more than 391. But anyway, 391 is quite fast, isn't it? Hi, Peter. Daniel, it's great to see you. Um, you're sitting on a beautiful beach somewhere. <laughs> And I'm sitting in the, the studio, which uh, is a little busy with this is the kind of book library area. I mean, the, the other side of the bookshelves is the kind of drawing area and the, the music as well, which is essential to have the music in the uh, in the studio. As, as we know, the, the world is different now, and I think in, it will be different in different ways, you know. Some, some of them positive and some of them we don't have a clue. Only just before Christmas, I was talking with my friend Julian Thompson, who is now in charge of design at Jaguar. Okay. And he said, it, it, unfortunately, the work that people did working at home on their own just wasn't as good as what you get in the buzz of a studio where you get you just get exchanged during the day, even at the coffee machine, you know, and I'm sure it's the same with all design disciplines, you know, a coffee machine. Hey, did you see that? Wow. You know, and all this excitement. I mean, it, that business, it's difficult because the Aston Martin thing is on hold and maybe on hold forever with the Valkyrie, you know, I mean, the difficult thing is and I was talking with uh, a guy I do some work for, who's also a friend. He has a chain of hotels, which buy Rolls Royce to make VIP transport from the airport to the hotel. And he now thinks that for maybe forever, certainly for a few years, it would feel inappropriate to collect people in a Rolls Royce. Other people enjoy it. One of the things I enjoy about McLaren still is that it people still get some pleasure, like they do in a little Italian village and the Ferrari drives through the village, you know, and the, the people get pleasure from that, you know, and that's actually quite nice, you know. It's like designing a super pair of shoes that everybody wants to have, you know. With the McLaren, you can't do that, but you can see it on the street and hopefully will continue to do so. Well, it can make your day, you know. There are cars which, frankly, look like they'd eat your dog, you know, yeah. if, if you let your dog go too near it. And I, I find that a strange, um, a strange design language, you know, and I don't know what, what companies are hoping will happen with that. You know, it's, a, it's an interesting problem that I mean there is you know the criticism that you see on the internet of some BMW things recently you know yeah. and, it, mm. and it's funny because if, if BMW intrudes itself into your Facebook or your Instagram feed okay. and then you see there are 2,300 people saying it's horrible it's awful take it away I don't want to see this you know that's kind of a negative you know I, either it's a specialist group and nobody is brave enough to say, well, I love it and I want one because then everybody falls, falls down on them, you know, but it, I mean, which, which in a way brings us back to your first question that, um, I mean, something, something like the a Valkyrie, you know, see in it, the car had, there is a battleground between the, the engineer and the designer. You know, okay. and each of them is it, it gets somehow expressed in the way the car looks, you know, because in quite a few areas, the engineering 
overwhelms the design and it's this kind of horrible things. And then suddenly there's a really nice piece of design like the, the cabin over the occupants, you know, which is really smooth, nicely done because the engineer didn't have an alternative that he wanted to impose on it. And this is why the car can become this kind of battlefield, you know. I know a fellow who has ordered one uh, and he didn't order it until he found that he could get into it because, you know, and yeah, actually a car that not everybody can get into. <laughs> and if we are super realistic, we know that people who are wealthy enough to have these cars quite often are not built like horse racing jockeys. <laughs> it's, it's for sure. You know, they just, they just harm them, really. Mercedes as well, I don't know now why Mercedes would do it considering by the time it comes out Formula One will have changed in 2022 you know and yeah. it won't be relevant to what Formula One then is you know and because from, uh, Mercedes will say they do Formula One for technology reasons you know, which may be true I do <laughs> kind of everybody knows that doesn't work yeah. because that's what um, that's what happened with McLaren. They bought this engine, which originally, you know, had been a TWR racing engine for an Indianapolis project for Nissan. The whole point with the race car is you want the ports as short as possible yeah. Whereas on a road car, you want them as long as possible in order to reduce the emissions. So you have this, you know, it's bound to be that you end up making another engine. It, it may look the same, you know, it may have the same number of cylinders, but it's, a, you know, th that's always a tricky business, which I don't, I, I don't quite know. And of course, uh, yeah, I suppose V12 even more so. People have said to me, yeah, what do you think of this Gord Murray car? And, uh, and I'm honest, I say, well, I don't think of it because it's actually, um, it, well, there were some strange things with it. Gordon said it corrects all the problems that there were with the F1. Okay. You know? Well, I don't, with the exception of the brakes, I don't know what the problems really were with the F1. You know, so I find that quite strange, but in a way, that's not the reason for doing a new car. You know, you have to, I personally think you have to put all that F1 stuff out of your mind completely. And you have to say, what are we trying to do here? You know, we're trying to do a really pure driving experience, you know? We're not looking for an ownership experience, you know. We're not like um, we're not like Starbucks who say we don't sell coffee, we sell an experience. You know, I went into Starbucks last week where only two people were allowed in, and all the tables were covered, and you had to stand and drink your coffee, and that was not a Starbucks experience, in other words. Uh, but doing those cars is not like that. I think you know, it, it's the the fun and joy of driving it. And to a degree, it's a lack of stress and driving it. And so it, to my mind, it asks the wrong question, you know, because it asks this question, what was wrong with the F1 and what can we fix? You know, the, the, the three seat idea was, was cool, but whether now people want something more intimate because the, there was not an intimacy between the driver and, the passengers with with the f1 really which was quite strange because the passengers couldn't look across and see each other either so i think a, in a way a more shared experience you know would have been something that you could ask but then that's a packaging thing and the packaging thing is packaging is remarkably similar to a 30 year old car but uh, yeah i i think it, it's funny it it and I would put the Valkyrie in the same thing that they ask, you know, they ask in a way the kind of the wrong question, you know. I mean, I, I, I mentioned that Ferrari Roma because it doesn't reference back to anything before it, you know. 
you could, its intention is to be a beautiful car, and from most views it is. There's a little one from the rear where it doesn't look completely perfect, you know. So I think that, I mean, I, you know, it's, I mean, the, the, the engine thing, I don't know how the engine will, will be. Um, what I don't quite understand is how an engine which revs to like 15,000 can use just six gears because I'm not sure how the torque will be, you know. But it, I mean, so it's, as far as it, it looks, it looks like, I suppose, it looks like 1995, maybe, you know, a little later than, than that, you know. To me, it doesn't look like, and I don't, say it critically you know and i'm i'm not in the least bit sorry i wasn't involved in the design of it because i didn't want to be anyway but i wasn't asked yeah. <laughs> but you know and i i think the the business with the fan at the back you know that's a kind of curious ugly stuff you know i mean it ought to be if you're going to use a fan in some way that it's magically different in every respect it's different you know all of that ought to be I mean, what? Because it's it's in a way it's interesting that I'm looking at a project where we it'll be electric, but it won't be lithium batteries because lithium battery. It sounds funny to say it's old tech, but yeah. in a way it is old tech, and also it's a very unattractive technology. That's for sure, you know, yeah. because it it's part of that same big question that you ask. You know, what we're trying to do is get from one place to another on our own or with some friends, you know, so we can be wherever we like with making the least um, destruction of, of the planet, you know. So what we're trying to do is capture energy, capture energy in some form that we can then use during the journey, you know. And to me, lithium batteries are a bit like, you remember eight track car stereos, which got in a knot and you used to see discarded ones thrown out of the window along uh, you know auto routes and things because people just got pissed off and they threw it out the window and it would be lying there you know um and i so i'm i'm looking um at a different way of of super cap super capacitors you know so in other words we set ourselves a modern question which is how do we move ourselves you know wherever we want to go in a way that makes the least damage, yeah. You know? um, and then you you're bound to come up with very different answers, you know. I mean, if you ask yourself, how can I have the most fun in some kind of four-wheeled vehicle, automobile, call it what you like, you know, okay. without either, you know, pissing off the neighbors, if you like, you know, or doing damage to the to the planet, you know. What is it that makes it fun, you know? And I don't think the answer is is a hypercar, but which sounds kind of gloomy, and it's not because I'm a grumpy old man, but it's actually because I would like people to think more futuristically rather than, you know, simply celebrating the past again. It, it's a slightly strange looking car. It doesn't need to be as strange looking as it is, but I mean, it, it's plainly really exciting, good fun to drive, you know. Um, but it it doesn't put your it doesn't put you at the kind of risk that a you know three hundred mile an hour road car would would put you at, if you like, you know. And I th I think a car it, it's actually it's a car that it it doesn't flatter you into thinking you're a better driver than you are, and then you have an accident because it turns out you're not. A better driver but at the same time you know it gives you that i mean it used to be in in some old cars you could have fun going round a roundabout at 50 kilometers an hour you know and you could sliding and you could have your opposite lock and all of this stuff you know which is which is it's gloriously good that's why people still like go-kart racing think back historically to when, for example, a four and a half litre Bentley was racing against uh, a one and a half litre Bugatti, you know? And yeah. one was a kind of dual, 
of excellence, you know, and a complete delight, you know, and the other was was a truck, really, you know, and that's, uh, I mean, it always, it always strikes me as a really nice uh, comparison between the two, you know. I mean, the, 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 the wretched thing is that, for example, I mean, the, I think the, um, the Fiat version of the Mazda, Miata, they're going to stop because people aren't buying it. But it's kind of interesting because it doesn't have the purity of the original, if you like. But I mean, the real shame is, of course, people aren't really buying the Alpine A110, which is a, a wonderful thing, you know. And I mean, that's difficult because that can make a hole in any argument <laughs> that people aren't buying the Alpine, but they are buying a Mercedes Black Edition, you know. There is a strange thing there, isn't there, that one or two people think that if you're doing an electric car, then it must look different, but they don't know what different means. So the front intake becomes like a, a cheap home electric fire, you know, because people look for these electric cues, you know, don't they, to, to impose on the car, which is quite strange. <laughs> because, and or you go like Tesla and you pretend it's a regular car and people seem to like that because funnily enough, I suspect the customer for Tesla is actually quite conservative. When you think a, a Renault Zoe tries because it has some blue lights as if that was, you know, <laughs> but, but, but that doesn't really signal the new technology. I mean, the difficult bit is, and I can remember students dreaming of the fact that the great thing with electricity is you can put the batteries anywhere okay. so they can become up the A pillars. And but of course, the battery, as we know it, 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 it can behave like a bunch of school kids and they're all running in different directions, you know, and you have to bring them together and sit them down close together in the classroom so that they can do useful work. And it's the same with the battery. You know, it wants to be all together, yeah. you know, tightly done in a box to make it the most efficient. Yeah. I mean, the, the people I'm talking with, for example, with, um, with the super caps, actually imagine the body panels of a car okay. could be part of the super cap storage using graphene, so you could make graphene doors, which are the storage, because the thing with a, and I'm not a salesman for Supercap, but it is potentially very interesting because unlike an ordinary battery, which makes a chemical change, which is why if you do it too fast and too often, it gets hot. Okay. The Supercap stores the energy in a totally different way and it doesn't mind. Bam, you put all the current in, in five minutes. And it doesn't mind if it's a drag stuff, bang, you take all the energy out in five seconds and the battery doesn't explode, you know? So it's a, you know, I think that's a really new technology, not with this yet, but if it meant that the body panels could be part of the storage of energy. The obvious thing to look after the energy is to be more aerodynamic, yeah. you know? And aerodynamic is actually, always can be quite attractive unless it gets out of control like Formula One, at which point you're fiddling with all these tiny bits and pieces, you know, to try and make this, uh, you know, we can get a 0.01% a, a improvement, you know, which is, which is pretty silly, really. But I, you know, I think that, I mean, the, the, the job, some of the projects I've enjoyed most are when I've been both doing the aerodynamic and the styling, if you like, the visual appearance, and bringing the two together can, you know, produce attractive results. And they don't need to be that everything looks the same at all. Two things really um, push technology for cars. It's either a war or it's racing. And since the war is a really unacceptable one there's no doubt technology is pushed as long as racing asks the right questions as well you know formula one is now asking the wrong questions but by 
I think by 2025, I'm talking to a fellow who has a lot to do with what future Formula One will be like, will be an energy, it won't exactly be an energy limited, but to a degree it will. So it will be efficiency and efficiency is what every designer should be looking for in everything they do. You know, efficiency is the word I keep telling myself with any project. How can we make this more efficient? Thank you very much. It well, is... it's, a, it's just a good pleasure. Yeah. 